In this video, we are going to take speed optimization for WordPress websites to the next level. Now, we could achieve some really good results by following best practices. Even with Elementor, we could get an A score with a very fast load time. You know, we do things like making sure the website stays light using a very light theme, making sure we don't add in a bunch of plugins and depend on add-ons that are going to bloat and weigh down the site, keeping the images small, using good hosting, and then having a really solid optimization plugin like WP Rocket, Nitro Pack, or one of the good ones. Well, there is something else that we could do on top of that to take it to the next level. And that's where asset cleanup comes in. What asset cleanup does is it gives us the options to prevent certain files from other plugins loading on pages where they aren't needed. For example, let's say we have a plugin for a contact form, but the contact form is only on the contact page. Well, we don't need that plugin to load its files on every single page. So we could go through and we could turn them off and make sure that it's only loading on the page that's needed. I'll show you how this works. And once you see how it is, and this is with the free version, by the way, as well, by using this paired up using the best practices, of course, and a solid uh, optimization plugin like WP Rocket. Pair that up with Asset Cleanup, and you're going to be taking your optimization to the next level. All right, let's check this out real quick. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use my own website because I haven't added Asset Cleanup yet, and I felt that this is a good opportunity right here. I've been meaning to set it up and to get everything even optimized further. Now, really quick, just to show you, I did get an A score, a little... Uh, little bragging rights right here, but there's still a lot of opportunity. There's still a lot of opportunity to improve things. Like I could optimize my fonts uh, there. For me, I feel there's too much JS being uh, loaded on here. So, you know, there's opportunity right there. All right, this is where asset cleanup comes in handy. So let's take a look at the plugins here. And we got quite a few of them, and that's because I got quite a bit going on on my site. I'm selling courses, memberships, and uh, have email marketing all happening from my website. So right here, you know, I got my Fluent CRM. This doesn't need to be loaded on every single page. I got these CrocoBlock plugins right here. They're only being used on certain parts of the web page, so they don't need to be loaded on every single page. And then I got right here Studio Cart. So Studio Cart is a plugin I'm using to sell uh, my courses, uh, sell memberships, and collect payments, things like that. This is only really needed on the checkout pages. So whole lot of opportunity right here. Let's go ahead and add Asset Cleanup, and I'll show you how we could remove all these from loading on all the pages. So right here, we're just going to type in Asset Cleanup. We just put asset clean and it should pop up right at the top. And this is it. So we are just going to use a free version on this because a free version does a whole lot. It is good for most of the cases. Now, there is a pro version right here, and the pro version is solid, especially for those who want to take it even to the next level because there's more you could do with the pro version. This is a robust plugin. Robust, not as far as heavy robust as far as what it could really do. So let's go back over here. Let me clear my cache. And the first thing that I do all the time and suggest to do is to always start with the settings and to take time to go through them. Now, there is a lot to unpack over here because this plugin does a lot. So we're not going to go through all of it because that'll make a 15 minute video into an hour and 15 minute video. We're just going to look at how I use this mostly, but I definitely suggest to take time going through each one of these settings, reading everything. Uh, the one thing I will like to point out is, you know, you can see right here, you could do the CSS minification. You could do, you know, have it offloaded. Same thing with the JavaScript. If you are using something like WP Rocket, where you're already minifying uh, your CSS and JavaScript, don't do it twice. I suggest not to do it twice because you could break things. Uh, just use what you need to use. So let's move forward. I just suggest to take time on this. What I'm going to show you is how I utilize this right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to my home page and I'm going to look for opportunity on plugins being loaded on the home page that don't need to be loaded there. So let's go here at home. And now if we scroll down here to the bottom, 
we're going to see acid clean up here and it's loading what it's doing is it's pulling out all the files all the javascript and css files that way we can take a look at each one of them see what's actually loading on the website and decide what we want to keep and what we want to turn off all right here we go so the first one is going to be our plugins and you can see we got 41 files that's quite a bit of files being loaded on just one page the next one is going to be our theme only theme three files right there then we got our wordpress core our third party our external third party ones and then our hard coded so what we're going to find most of the opportunity are going to be inside the plugins if you are using a theme that is not like hello or something like uh, generate press but it's more of those theme force types you're going to see a lot more going on in here but for now let's go ahead and take a look at our plugins so we got elementor right here now there's a lot of plugins being loaded into elementor but let's say right here i'm not using any animations i don't use elementor animations usually we use gsap and we do that ourselves so I could unload, unload the animations either here on just this page by clicking that, or I could unload it on the entire site. Let's say I'm not going to use animations throughout this entire site. So why load this CSS file if I'm not going to use it? And that's it. We're going to keep it just like that. Now you got other settings here and you could go through each one of them, but this is how I use it right here. I like to keep it simple. Either I offload it for the page or offload it for the site. Now we can keep scrolling through looking for more opportunities. All right. Looks like this is all that's needed. Now, if you are first using it, you're probably going to want to go through each one carefully. Now, what I do suggest, though, is if you turn one off, like I turn this off, would be to update it and to test it out in the front end. Make sure you clear all your cache. All right. That's important. Clear the cache every time you test it. Uh, don't just turn off a bunch of these and then let it run. Try to do one at a time in case if one of them does, you know, is needed and it breaks the site. At least you could identify which, which one that is. This is tedious. It takes time. All right. This is that's why I'm saying this is for next level optimization. It is a very time consuming one, but this is for those those speed heads out there, you know, not not the bad speed, but the the website speed heads, you know, that's who this is for right here. All right. For not using elements or icons, we could turn that off. Let me skip through this right here. All right. These all look like things I need or I don't know if I need them or not. If I don't know, then I better leave it. Uh, but I could always experiment, turn it off and test it. See if that breaks anything. All right. So let's go through. OK, here we go. Elementor notes. Now I have this turned off in my experiments, but the JavaScript file is still loading. All right. That's a problem right there. So we don't need this since I'm not using Elementor notes. I'm going to unload this site wide. And same thing. We just go through it. Now I'm going to skip through Elementor. Let's take a look now. OK, jet blocks. Jet blocks isn't being used on this page. So I'm just going to unload this on this page. Jet Tricks is not being loaded on this page either, so I'm going to unload that. All right. Now, next up is going to be Studio Cart. I don't have this being loaded on the front page. I do have it on other pages, so I'm only going to unload it on this page right here, and I could safely unload all of them. Now, of course, I'd be testing it first before just you know offloading a bunch of things, but this is just to show you how we could prevent a plugin from loading on the front page and so on. And there's a whole lot to this. Like I said, there's a lot to unpack. They got things like you could add a note uh, that we can keep track of things. There's so much going on in this plugin. This is definitely one of my must have plugins. This is part of our stack that we use for the websites that we build. This is one of the few that I will say is a must have plugin for a WordPress website. Now, not only can this optimize a website, and you could go through page by page and you could just really dig into it. If you got the time and you got the patience, you could go through page by page and disable all the files that aren't needed from that page. And you're going to have a really big difference inside just your overall performance. Now, there is one other thing that I use this for, and that is for debugging. Now, sometimes Elementor will break the site. 
or let's just say in general, all right, when a website breaks, let's say you do some updates, uh, the website breaks, something happens to it, it looks funky. We don't know what's going on. So the first thing that we do is we disable each plugin one at a time to find out which plugin is breaking the site. Let's say that we find out this specific plugin is the one that broke the site. Well, we could go ahead and contact support on wait on them, but we could also go into that plugin we can see which file is breaking the site in that plugin. So by determining which plugin, let's say Elementor Pro broke it. What I would do is I would go through and I would disable one file at a time, just like I would do for the plugins to figure out which file it was that broke the site. Sometimes it's a file that is not needed. So instead of waiting on support to fix things or having to use older versions, especially if there's a security risk going on, well, we could just disable the file. It's not needed and it could fix it. Or we could even find out what's really breaking it. And when we contact support, we could give support more details and show them, hey, we identified in the update this specific file broke the website. Well, there's a whole lot more to this as well, especially in the pro version, but this is a good start. I definitely suggest for anybody who is looking to optimize their websites that really uh, likes that, likes to get those A scores and likes to get everything as clean and minimal as possible to utilize this. And it's not just for Elementor, this is for any WordPress website. So I hope all you speed heads out there, and I'm not talking about that kind of speed, but the website website speed heads out there. I hope you guys like this. I hope that you found it useful and let me know what you think. If you have any questions, drop them inside the comments. I get back to everyone and I really appreciate you watching. I'll be back again soon. And oh yeah, don't forget to do all that good YouTube stuff, you know, like and subscribe. It does help support the channel. Okay. Thank you.